Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. I never thought I would live to see the day where I would be jealous of El Salvador, a country that actually, you know, locks up its criminals, unlike our country where criminals just run the place. But now add to my list the fact that I'm jealous of Britain's NHS. Yeah, I'm just as confused as you are. England's National Health Service is no longer allowing prescriptions of puberty blockers for minors due to serious safety concerns. The Daily Wire reports that, quote, the investigation was launched after there was a massive uptick in the number of children who were being referred to the Gender Identity Development Service, a national health clinic in the UK. The number went from 250 children in 2012 to more than 5,000 in 2022 as the transgender movement gained steam as a social trend and experts warned that it was having a contagion effect. Last June, the NHS said that it was planning on blocking puberty blockers for minors because there was a significant correlation between gender dysphoria and other developmental issues, according to the Washington Examiner, end quote. Could you ever imagine our own CDC or HHS making the same announcement? Or even Republican members of Congress or at the state level as well. They'll pass some legislation here or there to protect female sports, let's say, but anything more than that and sometimes even bills protecting female sports itself end up facing a lot of pushback from establishment Republicans in places like Ohio, South Dakota, and even Arkansas because of the giant lobbies those politicians are beholden to. In fact, Benjamin Ryan, a health and science reporter who contributes to publications like the New York Times and NBC News, so not exactly conservative publications, put out this reminder today that the list price for one year of common puberty blocking hormones like luprolide and hysterline costs between $38,000 to $156,000. That kind of money is making a lot of bad people rich here because the incentive structure in our medical apparatus works differently than the UK's does. Not saying that I want their single payer system, right? Because patients in the UK hardly ever get to see a doctor or receive important scans or treatments due to government corruption and ineptitude when they control healthcare. So all I'm pointing out here is the differences in incentive structures. Anyway, Ryan also points out the legal issues facing our fight against the sterilization of children by reminding everyone that according to a 2016 Obama administration rule, denying coverage of such medications for gender dysphoria counts as sex discrimination. Rules like that were written by people like this guest on Riley May's show. Now, before I show you this viral clip, let me just forewarn you all that Riley May has allegedly stolen material from other big voices on the right before, so I don't fully always trust her work, but I'm just going to show you this clip anyway because the argument espoused by her interlocutor is one that plenty of left-wing trans act activists do make in real life. Watch. How old are your granddaughters? They are six and eight. Would you support them to get hormone blockers to become the other gender? I would absolutely support them to get hormone blockers. The idea of one of my granddaughters learning that they're going to start having their period if they don't get their hormones blocked, even though they're identifying and portraying as a male, how horrible that would be. So yes, definitely. If your granddaughter came to you and wanted to get a tattoo, what would you say? That would be more difficult. I always told my three sons, the one thing I ask is please don't get tattoos. Really? Why, why tattoos? There's just something so perfect permanent about it. Permanent? It's pretty permanent. It's very difficult to get them lasered off or removed. You don't think it's like permanent to change your gender? Joining us now to discuss is scholar, speaker, and author, Dr. Steve Turley. Thanks for being here tonight, Dr. Turley. Uh, thanks, Kara. Uh, if I must. <laughs> well, see, that clip, I mean, isn't it stunning? What do you make of it? Well, I think what she did actually brilliantly there is she she brought out the fundamental contradiction uh, that's that's inherent in in trans uh, ideology, where trans ideology both denies and affirms basic biology. So so fundamentally, the transgender claim is that gender is radically distinct. It's wholly different from biology. Right. So biology is physical. Whereas, according to this ideology, gender is is personal. Uh, biology is material. Gender is identity. Uh, gender, by definition of trans ideology, gender transcends biology. 